designated Old Brown's Parallels and dated January 3, 1859 from Trading Post, Kansas, this is one of the better-known Brown documents from Kansas, written for publication in newspapers just before his final departure from the territory. Brown began by stating two parallels, one from the failure of government to do anything about the murder of free state men, Mares des Signes Massacre, May 1858, the other being his recent raid into Missouri to free 11 slaves and take some property. In the latter instant, only one white man, a slave owner, was killed, but all hell is stirred from beneath as the governor of Missouri was demanding the capture of those concerned in the last-named dreadful outrage. Old Brown's Parallels by John Brown, date January 3, 1859. Gents, you will greatly oblige a humble friend by allowing me to use your columns while I briefly state two parallels in my poor way. Not one year ago, eleven quiet citizens of this neighborhood, for example, W.M. Roberts, W.M. Culpitzer, Amos Hall, Austin Hall, John Campbell, Asa Snyder, Though Stillwell, H.M. Hargrove, Asa Hargrove, Patrick Ross, B.L. Reed, were gathered up from their work and their homes by an armed force under one Hamilton and without trial or opportunity to speak in their own defense were formed into a line and all but one shot, five killed and five wounded. One fell unharmed, pretending to be dead. All were left for dead. The only crime charged against them was that of being free state men. Now I inquire, what action has ever, since the occurrence in May last, been taken by either the President of the United States, the Governor of Missouri, the Governor of Kansas, or any of their tools, or by any pro-slavery or administration man, to ferret out and punish the perpetrators of this crime? Now for the other parallel. On Sunday, the 19th of December, a Negro man called Jim came over to the Osage settlement from Missouri and stated he, together with his wife, two children, and another Negro man, were to be sold within a day or two and begged for help to get away. Monday the following night, two companies were made up to go to Missouri and forcibly liberate five slaves together with other slaves. One of those companies I assumed to direct. We proceeded to the place, surrounded the building, liberated the slaves, and also took certain property, supposed to belong to the estate. We, however, learned before leaving that a portion of the articles we had taken belonged to a man living on the plantation as a tenant, and who was supposed to have no interest in the estate. We promptly restored him to all we had taken, we then went to another plantation where we freed five more slaves and took some property and two white men. We moved all slowly away into the territory for some distance and then sent the white men back, telling them to follow us as soon as they chose to do so. The other company freed one female slave, took some property, and as I am informed killed one white man, the master, who fought against the liberation. Now for comparison, eleven persons are forcibly restored to their natural and inalienable rights, with but one man killed, and all hell is stirred from beneath. It is currently reported that the governor of Missouri has made a requisition upon the governor of Kansas for the delivery of all such as were concerned in the last named dreadful outrage. The marshal of Kansas has said to be collecting a posse of Missouri, not Kansas men, at West Point in Missouri, a little town about ten miles distant, to, quote, enforce the laws. All pro-slavery conservative free state doe-faced men and administration tools are filled with holy honor. Consider the two cases and the action of the administration party. Respectfully yours, John Brown.